Good morning, folks. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is some troubleshooting tips uh, if you would happen to find your furnace overheated or boiling. Now, some people have asked me, uh, you know, what, what indication would they, have, would they have that it is overheated? And I would say tip anything over 10 degrees, more than 10 degrees over what your set point, your shutoff temp is, which is, we usually shut these off at either 170 or 180, depending on the model. Uh, so if you see it at 190, 200 degrees on the control, something's wrong. It shouldn't run that hot. Um, you would also tend to see once it gets up around 200 is that your water level float would, you know, we start dropping, you'd have steam coming out. I've even seen the float blow up like this, you know, from venting off steam. Uh, what causes that? Um, well, the first thing I would recommend if you see that is start filling the furnace with water right away. Don't wait around. Don't open the firebox so it can burn all the wood out so it can cool off. I've seen people do things like that. Just fill it with water, shut the doors tight. Um, then I would start looking for problems. Uh, one thing that causes it to overheat is lack of circulation, like a pump would go out. So make sure you have your, the, the pump circulating. Uh, fill it with water and then I would start looking for air leaks. So this particular model, this is a C-150 and it's new so it's you know, a used furnace, you're going to see creosote and ash and lots of things that aren't in this video. But um, the three places that it can get air that would cause it to overheat would be the firebox door, the ash pan, and at the flap or fan in the back. Uh, so at the firebox door, what I would be looking for um, is, and it's a little harder to see on a new unit, but as it gets older, it's going to be black and hard. And I would look for a clear imprint where the door jam is hitting the rope all the way around. So I'm looking, you know, you can see somewhat of an imprint there, but it's going to get a lot sharper as you use it. So I'm watching that rope. I'm looking at the rope. Um, and just in general, you know, when you latch it, is it pinching or is it flopping loose? Does it blow smoke by, you know, when it's running, the fan's running? Uh, that would be some things I would check. On the ash pan, same thing. Uh, I'm looking for an imprint. Um, I'm looking that it latches tight. You will not see smoke blow out of the ash pan um, when it's running because that's just fresh air. There's no smoke in the ash pan normally. Now there's techniques you can use to get the ash pan to smoke, um, like putting a board over the chimney and letting the smoke push down in the ash pan and then turn your fan on. I've done that. But you won't see that just on an everyday basis. Um, so yeah, make sure everything seals tight. You feel that pinch. Um, I've seen ash get underneath the ash pan and tip it. Um, and then when you latch it, the top doesn't seal tight. This jam doesn't hit the rope. Sorry, you see my hand there. It's tip. Um, so check, make sure it's coming in flat and um, that side to side. It's not something crooked. Um, it's sealed up tight. Uh, then back here at the fan, this is something that would, people would tend to miss more, um, is the, sorry about the glare, it's a sunny day today. Um, this particular model, and this is how they've been built now for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, but it's got this solenoid, sorry, let me get this here, solenoid lifts the flap, and there's a little plunger in there that opens and closes and drops on a little flange in that air box. Um, the older models had an aluminum flex tube that came up and around and the fan was mounted up here and it had a little flap that landed on the intake of the fan. Uh, well, basically what you're looking at for in all of this is some kind of a crack that can leak air in. On this particular style, what I would do is um, take the screws from the fan off here, lift the fan, and shine the light down in there and make sure that flap is landing tight. I've seen ash or grit get over it underneath the flap and stop it from, uh, I mean, not allow it to drop all the way down and it sucks the air. It doesn't take much of a crack at all. Um, I have seen a few cases where, where this flange meets up against the back of the ash pan. You can see where the silicone has squished out to seal it. Um, if someone's taken this off and not resealed it, you can get air leakage there, but that's not real common. And it would start doing that immediately after you, you know, stuck it on without resealing it. So if it's just abruptly changed, 
that's where I'm checking the solenoid and the flap, making sure that it lands tight. The old units that had the, the fan higher up with the flap landing on top of it, um, I would check that flap, make sure it's coming down tight. Um, if you've replaced the fan recently on those old units, they had two, um, um, two screw heads on the, on the intake of the fan. They would have been like right here and here and the flap, if this fan was turned, the, the flap would land right there on the top of the fan and those screw heads would hold the flap up. And so you've got to remove the screws and there was a ring on that fan that you'd have to silicone down so that it stays in place. So there's things like that to look for. Um, my experience in the last, you know, 14 years or whatever, I've been messing around with heat master furnaces, troubleshooting. Um, boiling is 99% of the time is an air leak and about 1% of the time is a pump out. Um, so, Hopefully that gives you a few things to look for, and uh, hopefully that helps you sometime when you get in a bind. Thanks.